plus one on Omaha, Fox, Red Beach. Yeah. Now, uh, just for the record, state your name and your current address. John McGraw, uh, 100 Rochester Street, apartment 609, Fulton, New York. Now, the uh, you went into the service uh, when? In 42, I was drafted. In, you know, yeah. Now, the, uh, so, let's, uh, if, if it's okay, let, let's go to, to that day, uh, you know, when you uh, found out that you were going to be landing on the beach in France. The, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, no, that's, that's something when I knew the, the only time that I knew was when I got there. They, they loaded us on, on the ships uh, in England and headed across, and uh, we were told on the way over that we were heading for the combat. Uh, and we, we had heard nothing about when we were going or anything before that. And uh, uh, we didn't know, as I say, when, when the ship stopped and the front went down <laughs> we we had been training and we knew that we had to get out onto the beach now what unit were you a member of at that time 348th uh, amphibious engineers now what was your uh assignment well my uh after we helped the infantry get rid of the germans that were there on the beach mine was to uh, clear minefields. Now, we'll, let's step back. You're, you're in the landing craft heading for uh, the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going through your mind? Nothing, really. Uh, we, we, we had no idea what was going on until we got there. You know? I mean, we, we, uh, we heard planes and things go, oh, hey, look at that, look at this, you know, but we had no idea what was going on, and as I say, until the boat stopped and the front went down, and we knew that when that happened, we were supposed to get onto the beach. Yeah. Now, so it, it, the front goes down, your, you and your unit come out, what do you see? A bunch of Germans that <laughs> we didn't think were supposed to be there. And the infantry uh, trying to get rid of them, and uh, so we uh, went to work and helped them get get all of the Germans off up up over the hill where they belonged, and and the infantry went with them, you know, and, and kept them moving so we could do our job. The it must have been uh, bedlam. Uh, oh, it, at that moment, it, it was quite scary. Yes, yeah. Well, the first thing that I saw uh, after we got on, I saw this half track uh, there with the driver behind the wheel, and I knew he shouldn't be there. So I went over and jumped up on the running board, and I said, hey, you're supposed to. And I stopped. Uh, he was sitting there in the top of the head. His head was gone. Wow. Yeah, and that, and all of a sudden, oh my God, where am I? You know, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what happened then? Well, then uh, I, I jumped down and uh, knew that uh, what we had to do, as I say, is get the Germans out of there so we could do our job, because after after we got the minefields cleared, then our job was to bring all of the ships and boats and dumb barges and everything in one or two at a time and unload them with all the equipment and, and personnel and everything and send them uh, up over the hill uh, to a bivouac area where they were, then they were assigned to where they had to go. But our job was to get everything uh, out of the boats and, and up over the hill so they could be assigned to jobs. You know. And and the what uh, 
what, what, what were you seeing at that point as the, the I I didn't hear what you said no. the so w what uh, was occurring at that point as as the, the, these landing craft began arriving well uh, it, it's crazy uh, the, the way we the way I thought and, and everybody else did too you know uh, okay now now no, let's see what's next oh yeah yeah I called my mentor and said but uh, we've got to get those boats in and we got to get them unloaded that's our job now we we got the minefields done now so this is our job now and so we signaled and, and the boats started coming in and and we went to work getting them unloaded now how difficult was it to clear the minefield well we we were fortunate there weren't that many uh, there so it didn't take us very long to to get them clear and uh, get ready to go to work yeah. oh, how, how did you clear them well uh, we had our mine detectors and uh, all of a sudden one of the guys uh, in one of the other units we, we heard this explosion and he had stepped on a mine and it, it had blown his foot off well it was we discovered that they were wooden boxed mines and I, I have one of them <laughs> really? that, that I brought home with me. But uh, when we discovered them, our mine detectors were no good. So, so we, from there on, we went on our hands and knees uh, with our bayonets uh, to, you know, to probe and find them and get them out of there. You know. Wow. The, uh, so, so you had to be poking the, the mines with, with, with yeah, your bayonet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. You, the by when you'd put, you'd be poking the the wood, they'd be circled by a wood box. No, this this one mine, it was called a shoe mine. Mm -hmm. That one, uh, it, if you go in sideways, you didn't hit the top of it and it exploded. And the way with the other mines, and if if you come right down on top of, you could explode them. Some of them, but other ones, uh, it took so much weight. To explore them that we couldn't explore them but anyway you know we we went in sideways to feel where they were and then we had to uh, take all of the dirt and everything from from around them and make sure that uh, there was no nothing else uh, we had some uh, that we started to lift up and it wouldn't come up that easy so we felt around it well they had a uh, what do I want to call it? Uh, underneath them, that if we'd lifted them up, it would have exploded the mine. <laughs> and so we uh, we found out, you know, <laughs> everything we did uh, uh, was hard because we did. Well, uh, we we were on the beach and did our job and had our job over with for oh, about three or four days. When we finally got a book telling us about foreign mines, <laughs> we, we, we had never we had never seen anything about foreign mines <laughs> un, until that time. Yeah, yeah. And one of my good buddies and I, when we would when we would find a new one, he and I would take it way over to the side someplace and and explore it and find out you know what it was and what it was all about and and how to deactivate it and then we would go to, to the other okay now with this mine you got to do this <laughs> but uh yeah we, we never even seen a picture of a foreign mine <laughs> until at on we could have written the book you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah wow the uh <clears throat> that's pretty scary <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that was uh well, the, the what thing, was going through your mind? The, well, I was just going to say, the thing is, uh, we had our book learning when we got there. We, we knew what had to be done, and uh, we did it. I mean, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think about, okay, now, should I, should I, should I? I did it, you know. I did what, what I knew had to be done. Now the uh, once uh, 
<clears throat> the 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 you guys had secured your position on, on the beach, then what happened? Well, that after we secured our position, that's when we started bringing the, the boats in so we could unload them and get all of the equipment and personnel uh, off in the water and up to where they uh, could do some good. You know. So then what happened? Well, then we, uh, we stayed there on, on the beach until uh, the water got so bad that we couldn't bring the boats in anymore, and uh, we were sent up to uh, to the Battle of the Bulge. We were sent up there to uh, help clear that, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we were sent we were sent different places to do different things. I mean, to uh, a bunch would be sent to build this road or fix this road, and we would be sent someplace else. Uh, where they were, they had found mines, and I would take my group and go there, and and we would get those mines out of the way, and and uh, it it was kind of chaotic. Is <laughs> that what I want to say? <laughs> well, well, and plus, you know, after the uh, the landing at the beach, you guys were waiting for the Germans to launch their their counterattack, and so right. Well. Where we were, uh, the Germans were there when we got there, and we didn't realize they were there, and they didn't realize we were coming. And uh, as I say, we we helped the infantry get rid of them, get them up off off in the beach and over the hill, and the infantry just kept them uh, going until you know out of our way. But after that, uh, we didn't we didn't have any Germans to worry about, except uh, every once in a while, one of the infantrymen would would bring back a, a several of them uh, and ask where he should go with them, you know. And uh, we told them there, there was a place where they were keeping all all of the Germans and and deciding I I suppose uh, deciding what to do with them. So we would send them, you know, you go down, go right down here and you'll run into where you want to be. Yeah. Now, with the, uh, when the, the, the Battle of the Bulge broke out, uh, wh where were you? On the Autobahn, the German Autobahn. And we, for a while, uh, we didn't know what the heck we were doing and they didn't either, but we would, we would get in our trucks and go up the road, maybe a mile, two miles, three miles, whatever, and they would stop us. And we would stay there for a while. We'd get back in the when trucks and, they, and come back. You know? When you say they <laughs> would stop us, who, who's they? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we, we were stopped, you know. <laughs> and, uh, well, well, like, uh, Oh, what are they? The police of uh, military police, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would stop? And and they had gotten word, of course. Uh, uh, they aren't they aren't to go any further. They are to turn around and come back. You know, and this sort of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, <clears throat> I mean, at the time when, when of the the D-Day invasion, I mean, that was the largest invasion force ever assembled in the history right, of mankind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you have any sense of uh, the magnitude of what you were involved with that day? No. no. All, all, all I knew was where I was and where I had to do and what I had to, I was a sergeant, and what I had to have my men do. Uh, other than that, uh, we knew nothing of anything else that was going on except, except what we were doing. And the, you know, uh, you 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 had been in England, right? Uh, oh yeah. Getting oh, ready yeah. for for uh, the you know right. The oh, attack yeah. Oh, yeah. Into, oh yeah. Into France yeah. and right. Yeah. yeah. The but you know did, did did the men have any sense of the fact that you know this was going to be it that you mm -hmm. know if 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 this invasion was not successful that you know it could have been the end of the world as we know it. We no, like I said, myself and I assume uh, most of us uh, d 
didn't think anything of that kind of stuff because we, we had been trained to do our job. And when we got there and got unloaded, got us unloaded, <laughs> and uh, uh, we knew what we had to do and we did it. The, uh, what did you, th I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you ever see anything like that? No. <coughs> the, uh, that, is a, that is a piece of shrapnel from a German 88 shell. And it, it uh, hit me in the helmet and it dented my helmet. If you don't mind, sit, 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 down. Oh, sit oh, back I'm down sorry. so that. It, it, it hit me in the helmet and it dented my helmet. and. At the time, we knew, of course, there was a raid going on, so we were, we were down on the ground, and uh, it's amazing how much of you you think is in that helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all of a sudden, I felt this, and when, you know, okay, what, was, what went on, you know? Well, when the raid was over with, I picked my head up, and that was laying right there in front of me, and I, oh, you son of a gun, you're going home with me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and, uh, uh, well, 67 years I've been carrying that, so it's good luck. Huh? It, it certainly has yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, so, so where was it uh, when you discovered it? Was it on the ground? Or oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it had, uh, well, the shell, of course, had landed and exploded. And, and the shrapnel like this uh, went all over, and this piece, just came, this came and hit me in the helmet and dropped. Now, what happened to your helmet? Uh, there was just a, a dent, fortunately. And I have, that's, that's heavy. That. Oh, yeah. Well, I have an idea that possibly <clears throat> on the way from the shell to me, it hit and, and bounced. So, so it, it didn't have full velocity when it hit me. Yeah. Wow. The, so somebody was looking out for you that day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yep. The, uh, what, what was your, did, did, did it stun you at all? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Did, you get a little nervous, you know, when, when, when things like this happen to me. And one of my friends was, like, over here next to me. Uh, one piece, and I'm sure it was this same shell, hit him in the ankle and tore his ankle all to pieces, and they... They had to take him back to England to the hospital. Oh. Now, uh, whereabouts were you guys when this happened? Right on the beach. Uh, well, I say on the beach. Uh, everything that we did was from the beach up this one hill, and that, that's where we bivouacked, was right on this, up top of this hill. Was this the first day and of, the, of the invasion? No, that's just probably, oh, I don't, probably second or third. I mean, how do I know? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm there, I'm working, and, all, and this, this stuff happens, and, and you go on, and you go on, and okay, when did it happen? How the heck do I know? You know? It, it did. That's all, that's all I can tell you. It happened, and I got proof that it happened. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, <clears throat> So then, um, after the the you know your unit moved forward, uh, the um, what what happened next? Well, we uh, all we did, uh, as I say, we we would we would be taken. My group would. Uh, I was told, you know, you better do this. Over in and go and, and these these we found a minefield over here that needs taken care of, and we would go and do whatever. And uh, what, another group, well, uh, just this road over here is bad. We need to fix that up so we can use it. And we were sent and uh, did uh, what do you call it? odd jobs? I guess you'd call it. <laughs> and after we would get we would go and get it done, then we'd come back. To where our unit was, and uh, then be sent someplace else to do another one. <laughs> the uh, and, and uh, 
as the the war, you know, began to, uh, you know, at what point did you, where did you end up uh, at, at later? Well, we were quite fortunate. Uh, as I say, we were on the Autobahn and going back and forth, and we didn't know what we was doing, and apparently they didn't either. Well, they did know, but they didn't let us know. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> they sent us down to a camp and uh, told us that the war was over with. What, and, was, your, what was your reaction? And <laughs> good, you know, <laughs> Let, let's go home, you know, this sort of a thing. I'm, but. Uh, as I say, we, and we didn't do it for quite a long time. We didn't do much of anything except uh, try to find a place to go to work, you know, <laughs> sort of a thing like that. And, and as I say, we were sent to this one camp and we're told that the war was over with. And uh, uh, one reason that they had been sending us back and forth uh, on the Autobahn was they had, they had decided <clears throat> that our outfit would be going over to Japan. Uh, Hello, Patty. Uh, okay, uh, we'll we'll, <coughs> we'll be up in uh, in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you. And by the time by the time we were done doing all this traveling, the war was over with over there too. So we didn't have to go. So, so what lessons did you draw from this, from the whole experience? Oh God, <laughs> it's it's hard to think of stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, when it, the the thing with me when when I when I did get out and get home, uh, and most of us uh, that were in my outfit and. and a lot of others that I had talked to, uh, nobody, but nobody except us that were there, had any idea what was going on. I mean, you know, like, like now you got your TV and, and all of this stuff, well, there was nothing back then at all. Uh, I guess once in a while there would be a headline in a paper about something that happened, but so, oh, look at this, you know, that sort of thing happened. But So when we got home, like myself, uh, I went in the house and uh, my mother and father, oh, you know, how, how are you doing? You better better get out of your uniform, get into your service, and get back to work. And that's what I did. <laughs> so, you, you know, they're just, there was just not, nobody here uh, that give a darn because they didn't know anything. They had no idea what was going on. And it wasn't until uh, 2001 uh, on my 80th birthday, that uh, we were going to go down to Virginia, and all of a sudden, I thought, "Geez, seems so. It's about time my kids knew what went on." So uh, I did start talking to them about it, and uh, all of them, "I haven't you told them this before?" <laughs> and I said, "Because as far as we are concerned, nobody gave a darn. I mean, they didn't have any idea what went on, what we did." So. I uh, said, "Oh, so so you're home, good, you know, like, <laughs> like you like you like you're coming home from a job and, and have your supper and go back, you know." Wow. But the, uh, is there anything I left out that you'd li like to add? Nothing that I can think of. No. The uh, is there any point that you'd like to make about your experiences? About what? I can't. About your experience? Oh. Uh, It, it's stuff, as far as I am concerned, uh, it's still all in my head. But now, once in a blue moon, some little thing will come up and, and uh, try to get in front, you know, and, and I, I, fortunately I can push them back now because they aren't there, but at first uh, it was continually something in my mind uh, going on that shouldn't be, you know, it's scaring the heck out of me. And Debbie uh, took me over, oh God, when, when and 07, I think it was, uh, back to see 
the beach and uh, I, I come down this, walk down this hill and cement and there was a, a railing there <clears throat> and uh, this is hard for me to even say now but I, I went down <clears throat> and I took a hold of that railing and I said to Debbie, I said, my God, Debbie, I'm home. There, there was my beach right there. And uh, I don't know for how long, but that, that whole incident just went through my head, just bam, 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 you know, like that. And, and I, I'm standing there holding on to that, and uh, it, it went through and stopped. But uh, it's scary, you know, things, things like that are scary. And as I say now, it's very, very seldom that anything like that happens. And my outfit, uh, for 45 years now, we have had a reunion every year. And that has uh, been quite ex an experience for all of us also, you know. We'd get together, hey, do you remember? <laughs> you know, do you remember? The, oh, yes. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to share this, uh, your memories with us, and uh, you know it's certainly uh, for me uh, a real moment of history. And mm -hmm. and I want to thank you for for coming over and uh, you know providing this insight into oh, yeah. you know, one of the most important moments in American history. Yeah. And uh, you know we're going to provide this to the New York State uh, Veterans Museum, so they'll have. A, uh, it'll go in their archives <coughs> oh, and uh -huh. uh, they'll have this part of the D-Day history there mm -hmm. about one New Yorker's personal experiences. Okay. So thank you for, oh, for coming uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing